Hello my soccer universe. Boy, uh, the last time I made a video over uh, Liga Portugal and La Liga I was not so excited and then it all exploded all over us. Uh, we had a championship that is still not decided in Portugal with Porto still being alive. We had a relegation race that's heating up with plenty of refereeing uh, controversies and so on and so on. But we have to start with the first and easily the most important topic of the past week, which of course is the racism scandal surrounding Vinicius Jr. when it happened at Valencia, when uh, where he has been like is usual in La Liga has been insulted uh, racially as a mono monkey and so on, although some claim it is called tonto although for me this sounds like a cheap excuse because those sound so similar that you know it can get mixed up i would not use this as an excuse at all and the strong picture is while he receives the abuse he sees actually someone in the stands and he points straight at that person which to me is a super brave action uh you can see him completely uh upset with the whole thing and even Carlo Angelotti thinking of taking him off and then realizing, no, this is not fair. Why should you get off? Um, which I can't see. On the other side, you know, you also have to protect your player. In the end, Real Madrid lose that game with Vinny even getting signs and off. Clearly upset about the whole thing and clearly another uh, horrible refereeing decision where they only sh uh, show half of the picture now. Meanwhile, the suspension has been rescinded. However, he then goes on to Twitter and, say, and really says that uh, La Liga is controlled by racism and the Liga and the country that uh, he loves and has welcomed him is unfortunately not taken over by racists, that the league uh, of the Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, uh, Messi is taken over by racists um, and even Carlo Angelotti. And I thought that this was probably the strongest thing is in his uh, press conference, or the second strongest after really what Vinicius Jr. did there on the pitch, um, that he refused to talk about the game. He said there's something that happened here that we need to talk, talk about, that he cannot accept any, anymore. And this is Carlo Angelotti who uh, has even, when he was a Napoli coach, said he will take his team off if the insults um, continue. Well, he has not taken Real Madrid off, although it, I think and I understand his logic behind it. And I think Carlo Angelotti really was one of the winners of this entire disaster where many people, and we'll come to some of them, did not bathe themselves in glory at all. Carlo Angelotti came out of this as concerned, as a winner, and wanted to also tackle this issue head on. And I really want to commend him for, for, for that. I think the reason why he doesn't want to uh, take off the team is because, you know, uh, what message does it send in the sense that I, why is it fair that I take just Vinny off? I think it would be stronger, and that's that, that's me. I think it, the entire Real Madrid team would have decided to just walk off together. That they say that we are not playing under these conditions anymore. That would have been uh, the, probably, probably the strongest signal against the whole thing. Although what was happening was quite strong because it caused quite the outcry. The first response to Vinny Jr.'s tweet, or one of the first responses, was of course Javier Tebas, the um, um, chief executive of La Liga, going completely tone deaf, completely tone deaf, and saying, you know, don't let yourself manipulate it. We have done this, 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 this. Uh, don't call, don't insult anyone uh, if you don't know the facts. And especially, we have been doing things, but you have not been showing up at, at, at the meetings. Zero empathy. Completely wrong. I understand to a degree. Again, I understand why he was doing that. He was trying to protect his brand. However, he completely was tone deaf there. Of course, the outcry was huge, especially Brazil. Uh, it reached Lula, the president, it reached the G7 uh, meeting, it got very political, it got, it was a storm all over. And this is probably the first time that a racism scandal has reached those high levels. And that might be the starting point of an action that can, that actually will get us somewhere. I want to still uh, go further in the events before we go uh, into a little bit more opinion on my part. Um, 
I think it was a little bit late by Javier Tebas then eventually apologized. Uh, kind of a lame one. He did not intend to, and for that he apologized. It was kind, kind of a lame excuse, but he had a uh, Thursday uh, long press conference where he basically backtracked and took up dug himself kind of out of the hole as much as he could get all the shit around him uh, to protect again mostly the brand and trying to say we really want to do something uh, but he also said that the Liga doesn't have the power really to do that well um, be that as it may I honestly know all too little he is a lawyer he speaks lawyerish and I think this is where all of uh, his really poor communication comes from and I have to have, have, have say that, uh, I mean, Javier Tebas is definitely one of the strongest defenders of uh, Spanish football as a whole, even going against the big guys in Barcelona and Real Madrid, uh, taking uh, like the Super League ha- head on. So there is a lot of good stuff about him. But in this case, he completely misread the room and d- did not realize what's happening. Even this press conference that, that, that he held yeah, I guess they, there were at times statements made where you clearly could get the feeling he does not really get it, especially two to him when he was asked how many black play uh, black employees does La Liga have. He, you know, he went on a tirade with, "I'm not counting them," and and so on. When you know, uh, the versus statistics are, particularly in the English speaking word, de rigueur in many ways. So uh, did not himself bathe himself in glory. However, he clearly came out that he would support Vinny walking off, uh, or an entire team walking off. He was uh, saying, well, if I had the power, points deductions would be there. Partial closes of stand, uh, stands, of course, are uh, something. You know, all these options right there. Uh, another uh, thing that happened is, of course, that um, ahead of the Madrid derby, there was already quite some ugly scenes with Atletico Madrid fans who, again, um, uh, chanted that um, Vinny is a monkey and, 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 and so on. And some of these got actually found and arrested so that uh that was a big one we got that valencia stand where this happened is now closed for five games so many 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 things happening uh suddenly when at first was what can we do we can only report it to the police and there's a criminal investigation this takes forever um it's also tied up in the battle between the spanish federation and and la liga where you know everything that they la liga can say goes to a competition committee of the spanish federation and those two weren't working well together as well so you know there is loads of loads of loads of layers i think what it showed is and it is something that um again whenever we talked about the racism in uh football leagues where it's actively in the stadium I'm not talking about what happened after euro 21 um when for instance bukaya saka missed the penalty in the final but when it happened directly in the stadium uh we've been talking about italy we have been talking about uh southeastern europe we have we are talking now about spain and this is not necess- this is not a football problem this is a societal problem in these countries or in these areas which come to the come back to the point that in these countries diversity was not a thing for the longest of times they didn't have the, em- the immigration uh, from uh, especially Africa um, like other countries did have like the British Empire there were many uh, you go to London it's one of the most diverse cities you see same thing goes for Paris you were exposed to to other races way more than Spain was, who was uh, until the mid 70s a dictatorship and was very, very Spanish. To a degree, this applies, of course, also to Italy, who were also, I mean, the Italian peninsula was always kind of a little bit more self contained, and Southeastern Europe, uh, there was no way. I mean, you were in the East, Eastern Bloc, you were amongst yourselves. What, however, stadiums are um, good for is. To create an us against them atmosphere this is what stadiums always do and this is the one way you know um hundreds of of, of years ago the two cities if you were at a different state we are they, we are we they are they and let's beat each other up this is very much in football stadium still very much present uh this that you just hate another team and it's a very uh non 
you hate another team or another player just because he's for the other other team, not, not because of his personality. This is also what's hap happening here. They hate Vinny Jr. because he plays for the big team Real Madrid, he's really good and he's a little bit flashy and flamboyant. And that's why we get at him and what's the first thing that he looks different than, uh, there is that he looks different than us. He is black and we use that. And in our whole societal uh, rejection, because he is different, we just take this directly onto him. It just reflects what is happening in a society and in a society that is at least 20 years behind other societies. I mean, I can speak uh, from an Austrian pers perspective. Uh, when I was growing up, seeing someone that was not white skinned was a rarity. Even when I went to the stadium the first time, seeing uh, women or girls was a rarity. Now when I go to the stadium, uh, I mean, it's still very much, very, 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 very much white because uh, it, it, it's a reality in Austria. However, um, at least there's a whole lot more awareness has been shed on this issue because of problems that have been happening. It is not perfect by any means. No, not at all. Um, Especially, I would argue, argue if you go to Vienna, but it is a reflection of, of society. And then, of course, there is one guy who chants and the other ones go with it. This is unfortunately always the problem. And it, what turns funny gets very, very ugly. What starts out as a funny insult is, of course, very hurting to the, pay, uh, to, to the person down, down, down there. And it is not upon the people. And I'm saying this now as a, a white person. It is not upon us to judge whether we meant this as an insult or not. If this person says he's insulted and hurt by that, then we gotta listen and we gotta do something about that. That's first and foremost. However, um, the whole coverage, I mean, I think that uh, the reaction of Valencia is, I understand. I don't like uh, collective punishments either. I also think it is really, really hard to think because of that, that others would stand up if you don't make it easy. I think the, in the Premier League where you have an app where you can report these incidents, that is probably the way to go to do it anonymously because um, it is really, really hard to, to imagine yourself, unless you're a big a bull or whatever, Imagine yourself to stand up against the person uh, that's next to you, especially in a very already charged atmosphere. Uh, I have to say this uh, from my personal perspective, you know, there's your personal safety concern in there as well. And I uh, have recently uh, also stood up against the person who made a racist comment uh, next to me, uh, where I stood, st stood up and I basically I was insulted. Why am I uh, telling him that he is a racist, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was not pretty and you know and receiving no support from from, from around being more or less singled out there i know i did it but uh it is really it that there, there is a psychological barrier that comes with it if there was something that would have been that could be done uh they had to do it on anonymously and if the stewarding and this and this is the other thing that i think that stewarding for instance in the premier league you can see the stewards all over the pitch in all these cases that that, that we're talking i when I watch stadiums in Spain, Italy, uh, even Austria, Austria, there are not that many stewards there where you can report these things and even most of those wouldn't even step in. It's a sad reality. That's a really, really sad reality. Now, as for the punishments that could have handed out, I still think the, the one thing is that the referee has to take the players off the pitch, but I think it should not be upon the referee. I think there should be people from the refereeing team, monitoring the situation, tell the referee, you know, that something happened, take them off because the referee is busy enough with what's happening on the pitch, honestly. So that's for me, the first thing, take, take them off the pitch and not make the announcement. Just say it happened. We're taking them off the, off, off the pitch. We're going to calm this down. There is something happening. Sort the, uh, the stadium person has to sort this out. We give you one chance and other than the game is abandoned. Uh, the problem, and the, the game the game, the game in Spain is either finished uh, in front of an empty stadium uh, or uh, the points are awarded to the team that uh, that got insulted. Although I have to say the latter uh, one, I am fearing that this could be weaponized by fans who want to hurt the club ownership. And that again goes to Valencia, where Valencia fans are so unhappy with their current ownership. 
rightfully so that they that they could actually use such incidents to cause trouble to the ownership and this is another thing this is how not how you stamp everything out i don't have a solution the one thing that i would do to say this has to be looked at as a case by case basis it has to some regulations have to be found i know Tabor said he wants to have more power for la liga because he feels he doesn't have enough i think he said all the right words words i mostly most when he when it comes to actions like uh he will support players blah 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 however i also have the strong feeling that it will not get to everything that he would say and everything has to be really thought through very 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 well um i also think that i mean it's great that vinnie jr is speaking out as a young black man they are on the field take taking on as the most uh, prominent face of La Liga at the moment. And because other players, and I'm thinking, for instance, let's stay with the same team, Antonio Rüdiger, or would not, although he could do it, he doesn't, A, he doesn't receive uh, the amount of insult, and I don't, and don't think he has the traction. It is Vinny Jr. who has, has, has the traction. I would like to see, uh, and we had also already the answer, wasn't it La, La, let's in the Dirk Kategat uh, upset? about stuff and then it went to nowhere it is that other players also need to speak out there but you know it has to happen and i know that vinnie jr uh has become a target because he is so exposed so i guess that he starts the, re the revolution the revolution uh is just fair enough uh but it has it definitely has to come more I know that I could make a whole long video about it and I'm not even close to touching all the points, all the thoughts that I have. It's just some things, some things that I've needed to pull out and just talk about it. For me, this is the main bulk of this video. This is the most important point. What is happening in La Liga, what has been happening, for instance, Serie A, what has happened is it's absolutely atrocious. And education, education, edu edu education is what's needed. It is not okay to single someone out because of the color of your skin, of your uh, sexual or, or, or orientation, or based on your religious beliefs. And you know, there are many layers as, as, as much as are there as well. You do not single out one person because of that. This is just an absolute no-go. That's where I want to leave it. But it is a discussion to be had and please drop some lines below because i it is something that has been a constant for for me now I have, I have many many thoughts and i'm not sure if i have communicated everything as well as i would like to i wish that we are not getting where we get to a point where this is not happening and i also wish that this context that different countries are at different stages in their development against this uh, sickness of racism or homophobia or whatever. There are places that are further advanced and places that are a little bit more behind uh, that this is also taken in, in the card while demanding change. But we could see it in Javier Tebas' response that this entire messaging that is if you watch from america or you watch from the united kingdom potentially even france uh is completely uh second nature you know what not to do in these countries they don't know because they didn't have the exposure this didn't blow up as much and i really hope that vinnie jr that this really goes up until a global scale and reaches the next level that is my hope and that more action will and can be taken and I'll leave it there. Now going back to the sporting side of things, I wanna go to Portugal and sporting side of things and sporting, yeah, this is where we're gonna talk. We still don't have a champion in Port Portugal. Uh, FC Porto managed to stay alive by beating Family Cao, you know, the team that gave them uh, some trouble in the uh, cup uh, away from home, by beating them 4-2 away from home and, uh, and therefore adding a little bit of pressure onto Benfica which uh, definitely made everything a little bit more in interesting. And the game was not a straight forward for Porto either, who had a quick 2-0 lead. However, uh, Family Car could pull it back to 2-2 just before the half. And then uh, Taremi uh, with two penalties actually decides it in favor of Porto. 
closing the gap to Benfica even more so than it was before. And then Benfica, with a win, could have seen in the, in the derby. A loss would not have meant anything uh, yet, but, you know, um, would not have given you high hopes either. Of course, Sporting doesn't want that uh, title gets decided in their, own sta in, in their own stadium as well. And you had a great atmosphere there because of that. And even more so when Sporting had a 2-0 halftime lead. And Benfica was reeling. Benfica, who actually looked strong, strong again. It was a teeny bit of... Um, how do I say? The 2-0 lead probably did not re necessarily reflect the game. Uh, the goals by Trincao and Diamant um, set it though to 2-0. Two, two However, in the second half, Benfica fought back. Arenes and uh, Neves uh, actually get them the uh, equalizing goal. The Neves uh, equalizing goal was a very, very run deep into stoppage time. Meaning that Benfica now holds a two-point lead over Porto. And that point could actually prove in a way also decisive because let's say uh, Porto wins then Benfica only need a draw other than that they would have needed a win to clinch the title so you know uh, it's not all lost for Benfica yet however we would have expected by this time that Benfica would have wrapped up the title already uh, on the bottom everything is decided we have everything else at the moment uh, looks more or less decided we have uh, maybe between fifth and sixth between Vittoria de Guimaraes and Aruca there is still some, some, some something to, to play for but uh, we know Benfica or Porto one of them will win the champion they both go in the Champions League Braga will go into uh, the playoffs unless something weird in uh, the European finals happens I, ha I have not checked that one and Sporting will go into Europa League and uh, between Vitor de Guimaraes and Aruca is uh, where uh, those, those are the teams that will make it into the Conference League qualification playoffs. Um, the last round pits now Benfica at home to Santa Clara, kind of their twins, and Porto has the hard hard against Guimaraes, which means that Aruca could actually pip them as well. So all happening for now on Saturday at 7 but you know uh, all these times it always can change but I think this should be the times of course there's also the Portuguese Cup final between Praga and Porto that I think could be a rather rather interesting one in La Liga it's all about the relegation battle who got really 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 hot over these past two rounds it started with Cadiz uh, beating Valladolid 2-0 a result that actually really really hurt Valladolid and kind of gave a little bit a tinge of safety to Cardiff. Uh, we had also Celta Vigo losing at the at Athletic Club, meaning that they are still in trouble. Uh, Almeria 3 0 over, over Mallorca, seemingly putting them at, at safety, but most importantly, Getafe getting a point, uh, only a point against Elche. Uh, a big name match was, of course, Barcelona going uh, uh, playing Real Sociedad at home, where Real Sociedad get a 2 0 win, spoiling completely the championship party for Bar Barcelona but it's a huge win for Real Sociedad because those are points that they will definitely need to make it into the Champions League and it looks very much that Real Sociedad are gonna make this there. Uh, Merino and Serloth scoring two goals before Lewandowski pulls one back. Barcelona doesn't really seem to care about the clean sheet record because suddenly they are champions and they are leaking goals left and right. Uh, however at least they seem to want to get um, Lewandowski his Pichichi trophy. Another huge result. Espanyol, who looked dead and buried after losing to Barcelona, get a 2-1 win at Rayo. Uh, Darder and uh, Melamed uh, scoring the two goals. Um, making it really, really, really tight in the relegation zone. Then, of course, Valencia against Real Madrid. We talked at length about the ugly side of that game. Uh, Real Madrid lose uh, it doesn't really matter for Real for, for a Lopez goal um, makes it 1-0 for Valencia. For me the most interesting part was the red card incident at the back where Hugo Duro is basically having Vinny in a headlock and Vinny then in the end wants to claim himself free and of course the VAR shows that to the uh, referee and he's duly sent off. But the card is rescinded, the red card is rescinded because there was not the full evidence shown. Um, if you ask me, if there was not now all the racist incidents around this, is a clear indication that both players should, should, should get a red card. Of course, Vinicius Jr. was wound up, so I think it is fair that this card is uh, taken off. I would, I would still ban Ugo Duro for what he did. You cannot take a player in a headlock. Seriously. 
Try to watch the Civil Derby. It was an ugly game. Turn it off at halftime. Of course, bet is again get a red card. And then, when you really thought that we have a clearer picture, the Valladolid are in real trouble now. The midweek round happened and it completely threw everything uh, up again. Celta Vigo is still not safe, as we will see. 1 1 only against Girona. Real Sociedad again with a Kubo goal in a deep stoppage time uh, um, of the first half. Uh, get another win and the Real Sociedad really look like they're set on the Champions League spot. Then the result of the evening that actually re really reignited the whole re re relegation battle. Real Valladolid beating Barcelona 3-1 and the uh, Barcelona goal was the last one coming very late on again for Lewandowski. We want to get the game with Pichichi. We don't care about Ter Stegen. Christensen on goal after two, uh, two minutes already settled it. Barcelona have, have now conceded so many goals when they were so well tied for, for the entire season. It shows you they're completely on the, on, on the beach. I personally would really love if Valladolid survives this one and I'll be rooting hard for them. Uh, the Real Madrid win over Rayo, really two things. The support that was shown for Vinny Jr. by the Real Madrid players and the Real Madrid fans was heartwarming to see. Vinny, of course, not, not being able to play because of an injury, not because of the red, the red, the red record. Kind of made it a little bit and at the But on, on the other side, you would expect something like that to happen. Uh, so yeah, I would like to see something happen at an opposing ground as well. Uh, but you know they win two to one. That was a little bit controversy for the first goal because it was a re refereeing by the cross place to Benzema when most of our players thought uh, it should be returned to them. But you know, I uh, don't want to judge that one. However, huge one then on Wednesday. Getafe beating Betis one nil again. A second red card for Betis. Betis are I don't know what they're not. They're, they're actually a good team to watch. However, for some reason they keep on getting red cards left and right. Alderete scores, scoring the goal, and um, Getafe seemingly on a good way. Then, another very controversial game between Espanyol and Atletico uh, Madrid. Atletico, like Barcelona, just on the past, um, uh, pre previously, when they sealed the title at es Espanyol, completely controlled crawling game, having a 3-0 lead just after the half. However, the big controversy came for Griezmann's goal for uh, the made it 2-0 in the 44th minute, where it was not clear whether the ball had crossed the line. And there is no goal line technology in La Liga. Making it really, really dicey. And then Espanyol made a fight back that you I have not seen a Re Atletico Madrid team giving up a three-goal lead. There's something that just does not make sense. It's seemingly, uh, this Atletico Madrid team is really in a tra transition. I'm not sure since he was the best guy to oversee that. Uh, Montes and uh, uh, Jocosello made it 2-3 by the 76. And then in the 79th, uh, Vinicius Sousa made it 3-3. You even thought that Espanyol might win that one. However, Atleti take it there. Now, as the aftermath, uh, Espanyol is, of course, incensed because they think they should have won the game because the second goal uh, should not have, have counted. Using the Vinny case to say, you know, the VAR did not have the full pictures. However, I think in this case, there are no conclusive pictures to show the op op opposite. They want this game to be replayed, which I think is a... Uh, to pull it... Where do you put it in, in, in the calendar? Maybe you can pull it midweek. However, you need to make a quick decision. However, more importantly, I think it sets a very dangerous precedent. And for me, there is a difference between Vinny Jr. and this one because there was no conclusive angle. Whereas in the Vinny Jr. case, there was a conclusive thing. You saw that Ugo Duro held him in a headlock. That for me makes me makes a difference. And lastly, I think the way that game went, Espanyol doesn't want to have that replay because I don't think Atletico Madrid will go a second time there. It's going to a three goal lead. They will want to make sure to make good on that. So I think I would not trouble the trouble if I was es Espanyol. With all these, those were just the, uh, the main results that I wanted to point, point out. We have the following standings. I mean, up top, as I said, the Real Sociedad 94%. Yes, Villarreal can still catch it, but it seems highly, highly unlikely that this is going to happen. However, it's all on the bottom. From Valencia to uh, Espanyol, everyone could still get relegated. And note that uh, Valencia has 440 points, while the lead Eight, in the 18th has 38 points. It is super, super, super tight. 
It is super, super, super tight. I think Espanyol have definitely the shortest the short sort. They definitely need to win out and uh, results falling their way. Um, as, as we see, Real Madrid have actually a clear path, but it's all against um, teams that are also down, down there. So it is, they still have, very much have, have, have had their own hands, but it will not be easy. Uh, so let's look at the upcoming uh, rounds. We have on this weekend, and these are now the time slots that I know at the time of shooting. We know La Liga can always change them. Uh, we have big one, Almeria against Valladolid. Uh, <laughs> Al Almeria is, of course, also in relegation battle, 15th, Valladolid in 18th. So uh, that's a head to head. I have a feeling it will end in a draw, but it will not help anyone. We have a big one between Sevilla and Real Madrid before for that, but no one really care cares about that. Uh, we have Cadiz against Celta, also a head to head. We have Getafe against Osasuna. Osasuna is in good form of, of, overall, but Getafe definitely need the points. And then we have Valencia against Espanyol, which is probably um, the biggest one of, the, of, of, the, of them all, because those are two big name teams, both in there. Valencia having the partial stadium closure. There's a whole lot of riding on that one. And then in the last round, we have another uh, head to head with the Valladolid against Getafe. If Valladolid is still alive, they still have the chance there. With uh, Elche and Cadiz, Cadiz probably will get the points at Elche, although I don't. Know, I think Elche probably would want to say goodbye in winning ways in uh, from La Liga, because they're going down for sure. And Espanyol against Almeria is also winnable. It is really, really ignited down, down there. And that has me excited suddenly about La Liga more than anything else. Valencia have to go to Betis. That's not a done deal. So with all that, we might actually see Valencia get relegated after all, because a lot of storm is going against them. I personally would not like to see that either, but you know, let the games be played. Any case, Please let me know your thoughts on anything. That I know it was a long video, but I think it was worthwhile. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.